Bright sunlight from the window illuminated the room. The loud sound of the alarm clock woke up the protagonist. Opening his eyes, he was horrified when he looked at the walls. There were strange, bloody hieroglyphics painted all over the room. He wondered what they meant and who could have written them. Suddenly, all the inscriptions disappeared, and the guy couldn't tell if this was happening to him. Could it be a fantasy or a dream? But those hieroglyphics were all too real. Looking around, he realizes this isn't his room. Trying to realize what was going on, how he was here, and where his old life had gone, a flood of information pierces his head along with a searing pain. Memories. Memories of his other life seem to be downloaded directly into his brain. Here he is, still an orphan. Age and face are similar, but his life path is different. He got a job, passed exams in one of the best universities, where he had great prospects. But after dropping out of high school, he works as a regular salesman. He realized that he was still the same guy named Fanchu, but from a parallel universe. Even though he had passed into another time, he was still wondering what those writings on the walls meant after all. There is nothing in this Fanchu's memory about this strange phenomenon. His musings were interrupted by a gentle female voice coming from the other room. Honey, it's time to eat. After that, a tall, slender girl wearing only a nightie entered the room, fixing her long, white hair and looking at Fanchu with a smile. He looked at the beauty in utter bewilderment. Had he already gotten married in a parallel universe? The girl came closer and sat down on the bed next to the surprised boy. Honey, you're awake. Let's go eat. She uttered again, smiling sweetly. Fanchu thought he was very lucky to be transported to this universe, for in the past he had failed to find such a beautiful and affectionate companion. But what should he call her? Wife, girl, or sweetie? Or maybe a baby girl? Although this name is very fitting, Fanchu decides to remember what he called her. Her name must be in the newfound memory. Trying to remember something, his heartbeat spikes and anxiety overwhelms him. He can't remember her name or her biography or how they met. There are no memories of any kind associated with this girl. No memory of that person at all. Not knowing what that meant, the boy slowly turned around to look at her and was met with a piercing stare. Her expression was very different from a moment ago. Who are you? said Fanchu in a trembling voice full of fear. You can see me? the girl said in a voice that was no longer human. Her body was changing, losing its human form. Fanchu was horrified by what his eyes saw. His brain was too overwhelmed to realize what was happening. Just a few moments ago, there was a beautiful girl standing in front of him, calling him darling in a sweet voice. Now it was a monster with huge claws and sharp fangs. In a loud, demonic voice, she screamed that he could see her. The last thing Fanchu could see was the anger in her blood-red eyes. The demon swiftly pounced on the guy and killed him by biting off his head. Fanchu woke up with a scream upon hearing the sound of the alarm clock. What the hell? I'm not dead? It was a dream, wasn't it? When he looked around the room, he found that he was in the same room with hieroglyphics painted on the walls. The guy realized it wasn't a nightmare. He actually died, and the day restarted. He already understand who will enter the room in a moment, and what will happen next. Fanchu decides not to let the girl realize he sees her at all costs, thinking he can avoid death. At that moment, the door ajar and the same sweet voice came out inviting me to lunch. Honey, you're awake. Let's go eat she said, sitting down next to the guy who was trying hard not to notice her. All he could think about was not moving or accidentally looking at her. Otherwise, it would mean death. The demon could feel his fear and the way his body trembled. And the drops of sweat falling from his face revealed him. You, see me, were the last words Fanchu heard while in the demon's dead grip. He was killed a moment later. Waking up again in the same environment, he was racked with a wild anger that tore at him from the inside out. He cursed the demon and wished it dead. Thoughts swarmed in his head. How had he gotten to this point? If he got caught in a time loop and after death, starts from the beginning, like in the game. Does this game have a purpose and is it possible to survive in it? There must be a way out of this situation. Fan Shu pondered how everything happened at the moment of his last death. Back then, he had just looked down without looking at her. But she came over to make sure, so she has to make sure he sees her first. Knowing what was about to happen, Fanchu picked up his phone and started watching the social media broadcasts. Trying to shift his attention from the girl who had already crossed the threshold of the room and was approaching him. Honey, are you looking at other girls? You only love me, don't you? Saying that, she pressed herself against Fanchu and started asking him various questions to try to get his attention. Fear enveloped him, but he managed to contain it by concentrating on the phone and repeating to himself that he needed to stay calm. After another swipe, she appeared on his screen wondering if he could see her well. 
Fan Chu jumped up in fear, throwing the phone away from him. Behind his back, he could already feel an ominous breath. Abruptly turning around, the guy swung his fist and tried to hit the demon. But the one with great speed easily dodged the blow and clawed at his arm, biting it off. Heh, eaten this time, uttered Fan Chu, slowly losing consciousness, after which he passed away. Further attempts to avoid death were unsuccessful. She'd come over and over, sweet-talk him into dinner, and then kill him when she realized he'd noticed her. For the eighth time tried to escape from the place, but that also failed. There's no hiding from it. He even tried to be nice to her, but that idea was a failure too. After 13 tries, he was already begging for death. Just to end it all. Healthy on the outside, but sick at heart. Alive on the outside, but dead on the inside. 14, 15, 16. Death is unstoppable. Every time Fan Shu dies, his memories from this universe come back to him, and now he understands the world better. The only difference from the past world, the nature of this one is beyond comprehension. Fan Shu couldn't gather his thoughts. Why can't this loop stop? Who wrote those hieroglyphics on the ceiling? So why do they disappear as soon as he starts looking at them? Are they the cause of what is happening, and is his wife part of it? Anger overwhelmed Fan Shu, and he wished death for the demon, saying it over and over again. In order for him to be saved, she must die. For the umpteenth time after the girl entered the room, the guy only grinned knowing what needed to be done. Fan Shu got up from the bed and walked resolutely towards her, not paying attention to her or her already annoying sweet nothings, and just walked right through her. She woke him up every time, but she never touched him. Which means this demon can only attack when sure he can see her. Realizing this, Fan Shu confidently made himself breakfast, while the girl hysterically tried to get his attention. The only way out of here is to go out and find out what's wrong with this world. The girl begged not to leave, but to stay with her and spend time with her at home. That didn't stop Fan Chu from loudly slamming the door and leaving the apartment. Walking down the stairwell, all he could think about was that he'd come back here. No one gets away with 18 murders. No one. He has to get revenge. Find a way to destroy everything. Come back again and kill her. After going downstairs, Fan Chu opened the door and stepped outside. Isn't this hell? He uttered, losing his mind. In a blood-red glow, he was surrounded by a variety of monsters and ghosts that could not be counted. He laughed very loudly with the laugh of an insane man. He had no idea how interesting the world was. What he saw made him nauseous and he began to vomit. At that time, he saw a silhouette approaching. It was a sweet little girl who asked if he was okay and if he was sick. Fan Shu stroked her head and replied that he was fine. Realizing that he was seeing her, the cute little girl's face began to change to the ugly face of a monster. You can see me! shouted the demon, swinging his huge axe. When he saw that, he laughed hysterical laughter again. He had no idea that this child would want to kill him. There are a lot of monsters like this, so you can't worry about the lack of chances to die. Fan Chu said he was jealous of them because they were already dead. Then a huge axe destroyed his body. Again the alarm clock, again this room and the hieroglyphics. The sweet voice calling for tomorrow again. It's been so tiresome for 20 days. After watching for half a day, it became clear that this world is full of all sorts of monsters. Some look scary but are stupid. Others, though aggressive, are like air and have no power to affect anything. Others, on the other hand, have a form not unlike a human. They get as close to the target as possible, as if they were their own. And when they get a response, they attack. As an example, this wife. But even though the common man can't detect them at all, they still haunt him in their role. What the hell is that for? Oh my god, do they really want to become one with us? Fan Chu discovers that his account balance is 3 yuan. Yeah, with a balance like that, he'll have to get a job to explore the world. Suddenly, a message came from the manager accusing Fan Chu of being an alcoholic and wondering why he wasn't at work yet. And he's been late a lot this month. He learns from the correspondence that he has to be paid for the transaction he made, and for this he has to come to the sales office. Then he goes to the office building hoping to get the money he really needs. When he arrives at the address, he discovers that once there was an academy called White Willow, but now it is a mental hospital. Walking further and touching the wall, Fan Chu realizes that the buildings of the two worlds, ghostly and real, have crossed. The ghostly he could see, but he could not feel. At this time, one wonders, what? Scared of what might happen if other people could see it. Then he enters a building whose mystery is shrouded in darkness. There was not a soul in the assembly hall, dining room, and restroom. Walking into the room, there was a heavy odor of blood. Fan Chu saw a human silhouette lying on a hospital bed with moaning and crying coming from it. 
Moving closer, he sees the figure of a girl slowly turn around calling him brother. It wasn't really a girl, it was one of the monsters. Realizing this, Fan Chu just walks past without letting on that he sees her. Leaking into another chamber, he is greeted by another monster, which he also leaves behind him without noticing as he continues walking. Exploring the building, Fan Chu realizes that there are at least a dozen monsters. Some doors to wards are open wide open. Monsters can come out of them. Walking past them was all he could do to keep his cool, thanks to his favorite wife killing him 18 times. Along the way, Fan Chu notices hospital sheets and maps and tries to pick them up in hopes of finding out some information. But he can't, because these sheets are ephemeral. But how did they get here? It can't be. Could all this have been created by humans? These creepy wards used to be full of them? While Fan Chu was looking at the sheets and intending to find out why this was happening, he notices something seeping through him. It was a ghost in nurse's clothes hanging from the ceiling. As he approached, he asked Fan Chu, Is he here? And does he want to join her to explore the mysteries of existence? To which Fan Chu pays no attention. He thinks that if there is a clue in this examination room, there must be more in other places, but the exact answer must be in the very center, namely, in the dean's office. Then he goes looking for it. Surprisingly, the hospital office overlapped with the sales office he needed to get to in order to collect the money. But that didn't bother him anymore, because he had a chance to figure out what was going on. Failing to find the dean's office on the first floor, he goes higher and enters the sales office where he hears disgruntled shouting. It was his boss whose name was Wu Dehai. Next to him stood a colleague named Zhao. Wu Dehai shouted, asking Fang Xu how he dared to come here since he had already fired him. Fang Xu simply pushed them apart and continued on his way looking for the dean's office. Wu Dehai was very angry at such insolence and with a shout ordered Zhao to stop him. Walking further into the building, Fan Chu found that he had finally found the dean's office. Opening the door, he heard exclamations trying to stop him. Oh no, this is the end, Wu Dehai said desperately as Fan Chu opened the door. A frightened woman's scream came from the room. A frightened girl named Le Fei and a man named Wang Zi who were caught in an intimate situation actively put on their clothes. Wang Zi shouted angrily at those who entered the room, wondering what they were doing here. And how dare they come in? At this time, Fan Chu resolutely approached the table where the girl was sitting. Then taking her by the arm, he threw her aside sharply. The couple was stunned by this brazen behavior and continued to get angry and yell. But Fan Chu didn't pay attention to them, for he had found what could be a clue. Looking at the table where the girl was sitting there was a torn piece of paper. He smirked, thinking that this hospital kept great secrets. Then he began to read the note. He who is favored by fortune, do you long to know the truth of the world? Are you filled with lust for the source of all misfortune? When you come to this place, you've had your fill of doubts. But don't be in a hurry, my friend. The key to knowledge oozes from the office of 520 block C. There thou shalt find that which thou praisest. Go. But when you find it, the choice is yours. Follow your gut and accept the gift of fate. Fan Shu finished reading and wondered. Who was this letter addressed to? How could the person who wrote it know it was coming? Block C, 520. Maybe the answer to all questions is there? Fan Shu decides to look for this block. When he left this place, he was caught up with a colleague, Zhao, who did not understand what happened and wondered at Fan Shu's unusual behavior, asking if he was okay. At that moment, the light bulb above their heads suddenly went out. Zhao was startled and asked if it was about the knocked out electrical fuses. Fan Shu thought to himself, that it was unlikely that this was just a normal blackout in this place and time, but replied simply, no. Zhao was surprised at such a cold-blooded answer and said that Fang Xu's behavior today was frightening. The frightened Lifey was very afraid of this and hurriedly left the room. And Wanzi ordered Wu Dehai to call someone to find out where the electric panel was. Turning on the flashlight on his smartphone, Fang Xu walked out into the main hall of the building. There he realized that there was absolutely nothing to see in this mental hospital. Wanzi asked Wu Dehai if he had been able to call anyone to find out where the electrical panel was. He replied that he couldn't get through to anyone, and the messages he sent were not being delivered. As they walked, Wanzi stated that according to his capabilities and position, he had access to more than those present could imagine about the hidden secrets of the Mina. No cell phone signal and no electricity. And if he's not wrong, those signs prove one thing. 
they've entered a restricted area. When they got to the sales department, they found that the employees were panicking. One of them was screaming his head off about the spreadsheet he was working on, and after the lights went out, it had not been saved. To which Udahai told him not to shout, but rather go and look for the electric panel. The guard says everything's fine, but they're just whining about the amount of overtime they're going to get. And now he's on his way to check the electrical fuses. Meanwhile, panic was growing in the office. Everyone was trying to call somewhere, but no one could get through. Fanchu asked Wanzi, what is this restricted area? Hearing the words about the restricted area, the workers standing nearby became alarmed, not knowing what they were talking about. The panic gathered momentum. Everyone began to worry and discussed all possible negative reasons for what was happening. Wanzi abruptly turned around and shouted at the workers to shut up. Having stopped the crowd's noise and drawing attention to himself, he declared that everyone should shut up and listen to him. What he's about to say is very important. It's a matter of life and death. After making sure everyone was listening intently, he continued to speak, explaining that, simply put, in this world the supernatural has a place. The so-called forbidden zone is the realm of supernatural creatures, which can be understood as subspace. This is the spooky world, the trembling plateau. An ordinary man needs incredible confidence to circumvent the laws of this world, or else death awaits him. The crowd was perplexed as they listened. Some were horrified and some thought the words were nonsense. Someone worriedly noticed that the guard who had gone to repair the electricity had not returned for a long time. Did something happen to him? Wudahai asked Wanzi with fear in his voice, what should they do now in this situation? He said they had to figure out a way to get out of here alive. Otherwise, they're all going to die. Suddenly, a very unpleasant but very familiar feeling enveloped Fanshu. The feeling let him know what was coming. Turning to the crowd, he said they were already here, to which they were horrified and began to question him about what he was talking about. And where are they now? At that moment, one of the girls was enveloped by ghostly tentacles, covering her mouth so that she couldn't say anything. Her friend screamed as she noticed that the girl who had just been standing next to her had just disappeared. Those standing around couldn't understand how she'd just vanished like that. And how could it be true? Wanzi turned around and asked Fang Xiu had he seen what they looked like, and he said he didn't see anything. He only saw the girl disappear. The crowd wondered why Fanshu was so calm after what had just happened. Some called him crazy and said he might be possessed by them. Wanzi also noticed that he wasn't afraid of them at all and asked if he was an esper. Fanshu, not understanding what this was about, asked who esper was. Wanzi wondered why he didn't blink an eye when the monsters appeared. But he doesn't know about them? Who the hell is he? Then he explained that an esper was a person with paranormal powers, and his brother was one of them. The best way to defeat them was to use the Esper's powers to the max. Fanshu asked, Did he understand correctly that the Esper's here practiced abilities? Isn't that right? Wanzi was surprised that even now, Fangshu could think so clearly. This probably meant that he would be the key to their escape from here. Then he talks about what his brother told him. To become an Esper, you must use your powers. It requires two conditions. The first is to experience baptism by the fear of death causing the soul to suffer. The second is allowing the supernatural to enter you. But what you have to remember is that an esper's power is like a bloody rag. The more it is used, the more blood is left on it. That is, when we use force, we cannot avoid defiling our souls. Fan Chu thought about it for a moment. Because of the loop of rebirths, he had never even touched them. A wife, a street full of monsters, and they were all just illusions you couldn't touch. But if they materialize and break into reality, they can kill people immediately. This means that if he touches them, he can also use the powers to destroy them. Realizing this, Fanshu was racked with rage and a wild thirst for revenge. In front of his eyes was his wife who had killed him many times, causing him unbearable pain. He wished her dead over and over again, deciding that he had to become an esper in order to take revenge. His thoughts were interrupted by shouts from the crowd. Someone who had just been standing next to the people disappeared again instantly. They began to call out loudly, hoping to find him. They were interrupted by Wanzi yelling at them to all shut up if they didn't want to attract monsters. Lifei turned to him and asked him what she should do, because she didn't want to die, to which Wanzi replied that he didn't know. Two, three minutes, suddenly spoke out Fanshu, thus startled them. The luches disappear every two, three minutes. To be precise, women every two and men every three. Three minutes after the guard disappeared, the girl disappeared, and another two minutes later, the man disappeared. If that's correct, then... It's been three minutes, which means someone's disappeared. 
Saying that, he turned around and started walking away from them into the pitch darkness. Fanshu, where are you going? Do you want to die? Frightenedly, Zhao said in his wake. Fanshu replied that he was obviously looking for a way out and wasn't going to stand around waiting to die like the others. Wanzi shouted at his back for him to stop immediately and not go anywhere from here. Fanshu did not stop to say that there were no more than eight people left here. According to the calculations, they would all be dead in about 20 minutes. The angry Wanzi shouted to him that he was just an ordinary person. And how could he know something like that? His scolding speech was interrupted by Fanshu's cold, bone-piercing gaze, who turned around and said if he yelled one more word, he'd kill him himself. And then he kept walking into the darkness. After a while, Zhao who caught up with him asked, why aren't they at the exit yet? After all, they should have left the office building a long time ago. To which Fanshu asked him to be quiet, because he noticed a green glow in the hallway, just like the one in the hospital. He realized that they had already left the office building, and now they were already in the Qingshan Mental Hospital building. Zhao, who was already crying in fear, he said he was probably having a glitch. Then he asked, how did they get here? They're supposed to be in the office, but now they're in a mental institution from some horror movie. Fan Shu asked if he could see the hospital too. Zhao replied that of course he could, and he could also see that long, creepy corridor. Touching the wall that was previously ghostly, Fan Shu realized that it was now real. The hospital subspace and our reality became one, and so did its inhabitants. No wonder they couldn't see the hospital before. Turns out the hospital had absorbed the office and they were always inside. So that's what this forbidden zone is. Zhao said in a frightened voice that he had stepped on something. In the hallway stained with blood, they found the tattered uniform of the guard and the clothes of the girl who had disappeared first. Fan Chu said that all female office workers have a slim figure and a body mass index within the normal range. So they weigh less than men, which means that's why the monster ate men in three minutes. And the women in just two. That's the difference in the time it takes to find missing people. Zhao was horrified to hear this and asked if they were really eaten. Fan Shu said that one of the men had just been taken away, so they were safe for now, since that monster was now busy eating him. Most of the monsters are locked in the wards, but suddenly a door is open somewhere. It turns out they were able to escape. But in all this time, they've never run into them. Clothes are clean enough, and there's blood where the cuts were made, which means they were made with something sharp. Fanshu realized that it could only be someone he had met before. For example, medical personnel who can move freely. I mean, it could be a nurse. Suddenly, they heard a noise coming from a dark corridor. They became uneasy about who it might be. This someone was approaching them very quickly. But it turned out to be the other survivors who were badly frightened and didn't understand how they'd gotten from the office to a place like a hospital. Fanshu and Zhao exhaled in relief. Udahai asked them how they got here. And had they found the people who had disappeared? Lifei screamed in horror as she noticed the blood that covered the floor and walls. Wanzi, seeing the bloody clothes of the guard and the missing girl, also realized that they had been eaten. Lifei started begging him to get her out of here. She said she was scared and wanted to go home. Wanzi replied that she was right and they should run away soon. At this time, Fanshu, looking at the timer on his smartphone, said that the time had come and that he would deal with her. Leafy asked with fear in her voice who he was talking about. And what was the time for? At that moment, they heard someone crawling behind them. Slowly, with a shiver in their bodies, they turned around and saw the monster sitting on the ceiling, which abruptly jumped at them with a non-human growl. The whole group started running away from the monster with a scream. Suddenly, Wanzi felt that something was holding him from behind and preventing him from running away. Turning around, he saw that it was Le Fay who had tripped and fallen and was begging to be saved. Wanzi told her to get off his back and hit her on the head. Then he started running away with the others, leaving her behind. Fanshu looked at the monster and realized that it was the same nurse who tried to talk to him when he first came into the building. The nurse had already grabbed Leafy like a spider preparing for a meal. Taking out her very sharp scalpel, she brought it up to the Liffy and ran it across her throat. Blood splattered all over the room. Zhao couldn't believe what was happening. He shouted her name, but Leafy was already dead and her body was being stripped by the nurse with very fast strokes. Looking at it, Fanshu thought that she felt this scalpel perfectly. She must have performed many surgeries in this hospital before she died. Even though she and Zhao are next to each other, that doesn't stop her. She keeps on dismembering Lifey. After all, it is impossible to operate on several patients at the same time. You have to focus on just one. She bared her sharp teeth and began to eat the dismembered body. 
Fanshu said he thinks cannibalism is probably instinct, so he assumes he knows her killing methods, approaching the monster that was greedily devouring its prey. He swung his fist and hit her on the back of the head. But she hardly felt a thing, for her body was as hard as steel. It seems that all the monsters they've seen before have such power that humans can't resist them. Perhaps the only way to make a difference is to become an esper. She has a strange way of killing, one person at a time from a crowd. First, she catches them, strips them, then devours them. So her mealtime is her safest time. Zhao said they should get out of here right now, because she's already finished eating. Fanshu replied that if you remembered what kind of balloon's life he had, it would definitely take the nurse more than three minutes to eat it all. Wanzi said that becoming an esper requires passing their power through our soul. Of course, in a place imbued with their energy, this process will go faster. After he said this, he put his hand on the nurse's leg. Zhao was very surprised by these actions, after which he said that although he watched a lot of adult movies, but to go along with them, Fanshu replied that he wanted to stay here for a while to try something, and if he wanted to, he could leave now. Zhao called him a pervert after a brief pause, but agreed to stay. After which he walked over and also put his hand on the monster's leg and began to sting it. Zhao said he couldn't believe it was the first time he touched a woman's thigh. Honestly, she's so soft and her legs are so long. But they're freezing cold. Fanshu noticed that Zhao adapted quickly. At first he was scared, but now... Maybe there's something about this guy. Then he said there was one minute and thirty seconds left. And they had to go. As soon as the time on the timer expired, they started running away. Zhao asked, did he think this was the best idea? Or had he already been here and knew what to do? When Fanshu first entered this building, he was able to memorize its layout and main corridors. Knowing the layout of the building, they would be able to escape from her without a problem. Running away, Fanshu realized that the monster had chased them and was quite close. But how is that possible? Did she change her strategy? They still had two minutes left. Why did she chase after them? Oh my god, did the Lee fairies have... Damn, who knew she had implants? I should have known, though. Fanshu's last thought was to hope that there was no silicone in heaven. The nurse then used her sharp scalpel to decapitate him. At this moment, Fanshu could no longer think about anything. So is this it? Is this the end? Or is he going to wake up soon? Will he be woken up by an alarm clock and his wife trying to kill him again? No sooner had his consciousness finally faded away than everything restarted. However, he was not in bed now as he usually was after death. He was very surprised that he had rolled back to the moment of groping the nurse's thigh. He found it very strange, but it seems to be preserved before he dies in the same place. It's like a system of levels. The first is an apartment. The second is a hospital. If it's already passed to the first level, then it's automatically saved to the second level. Remembering the silicone implants, he said they had to go right away. Zhao asked to stay at least for a little while, because he enjoyed groping the nurse. To which Fanshu said that Lifey has silicone implants, and the monster will finish her off very soon. Running away, they reached the stairwell and started down the stairs. After a few floors, they caught up with everyone else who were slowly descending the stairs. Hearing the noise from above, Wanzi shouted that the monsters were already here and ordered everyone to flee. Fanshu deftly jumped over the stair railing ahead of everyone, thus stopping them. Udahai was surprised to see them, because he thought they had been eaten long ago, as they had stayed in the room with the monster. Zhao asked the group why they were running so slowly, and they said they've already gone down 20 floors and there's no end to them. Besides, why run any faster? Chajo said in surprise that they were wrong about the 20 floors, because he and Fanshu had caught up with them after only three floors. In response, there were cries that this couldn't be happening, and he was taking them for fools. At this moment, Wanzi realized that there was something supernatural within these walls. He told the others what his older brother had told him. These creatures can create illusions like changing walls. One person who fell into this trap was doomed to be imprisoned in it for the rest of his life because they warp space and time. Fanshu found the idea of space and time warping very interesting, then asked survivors to throw their belongings on the floor where they had already passed. Wanzi said it was a great idea and ordered everyone to make notches faster. The group heeded the advice and began searching for things in their pockets and purses, after which they threw things on the floor. Fanshu gave the command to move on and everyone started to head downstairs. After a couple of floors, Zhao asked Feng Xiu to stop because he had noticed something. People panicked, recognizing their belongings lying on the floor. They felt hopeless. And as it seems to them, if they are already in this illusion, there is nothing they can do about it, and they will soon die. Wanzi again remembered his brother talking about how only an esper could see all these illusions. And the average person can't do it. So we need to see who can show the strength of spirit. 
Then clenching his hands, he said he didn't know at what point he would be captured, but he wants to prove his powers as an esper before he dies. If he can become one, his family will respect him. Office workers wondered how they could test their fortitude. But since no one knew, they decided to just repeat the moves Wanzi was making. Meanwhile, Fanshu walked downstairs for a bit thinking that it was very strange that as he remembered, the old hospital plan didn't have an elevator, which meant that it could be kept in the current layout, and he starts going downhill looking for opportunities. Because it's better to focus on finding a way out instead of praying, Wanzi thinks about Fanshu being very focused. Right from the start, he's as calm as a boa constrictor. When the nurse appeared, he didn't run headlong forward like everyone else, but as if stuck to the wall. Then there they ran towards the stairwell without them and Leafy, who is definitely dead by now. How were they able to spend so much time with this creature? Why didn't it kill the two of them? Wanzi mentally goes over the possible scenarios of what happened, but still can't figure out how they managed to survive. At this time, Zhao asks Feng Shu what he's doing while he's groping the walls. He also asks him to teach him something, offering his help in return. Fanshu didn't answer him starting to count. 10, 11, 12, and stopped at 15. Found it, he said looking at the iron door. Wanzi shouted happily when he saw this. Then he began to run down the stairs in a dash. He said that this door definitely leads to the exit, and that now they were saved. But now he was faced with the question, how was this door to be opened? Fanshu, on the other hand, simply took hold of the handle and turned it hoping the door wasn't locked. Surprisingly, the door opened. They were now free of the damned stairwell. No sooner had Fanshu entered than he was roughly pushed by Wanzi, who ran through the doorway, shouting joyfully that he was now saved. The other people also started to run out pushing Fanshu, who had just saved them with his shoulder. Only Zhao stopped and asked why he wasn't running. What's he checking? At this moment, Fanshu is thinking that since these people decided to test themselves, they better run faster if they don't want to run into the nurse. He just wants to make sure he won't be the last and the Esper's power should awaken soon. Plus, he thinks he's lucky to be in this hospital and run into these creatures, that it's even kind of sad to part ways. Suddenly, Wanzi stopped the office workers running like a herd with a shout. There was a fork in the road in front of them, and now they had to choose what to do and which way to go, right or left. The workers started arguing and pushing each other to get someone to go and check where these tracks go. Wanzi asked Fang Xiu which path he would take. If he had just found the door, he would find the way out. Fanshu thought it was strange. First, they pushed him out of the way, and now that it was a life or death choice, they were asking for help. One of the men rudely shouted at him that he should not be silent, but answer the question. Because the nurse is on her way here. So this is no time for him to be important. Nah, I don't care. To me, you're all just meat. Fanshu said to himself, glancing obliquely at the people staring at him. At this point, the nurse is invincible, and if these people want to buy time, it looks like someone has to sacrifice their life. After choosing a passage on the right side and walking a few meters, Fanshu heard screams behind him. He realized that the monster was already here. Everyone was running away from the horrible voice and the claws scraping on the walls behind them. She had almost caught up with Udahai, who couldn't run fast enough and was about to attack. He was screaming that he couldn't die like that, then grabbed the man running ahead of him. Then he threw him back, leaving him behind, saying he'd rather die. And now this guy was lying on the floor cursing Udahai. A moment later, his throat was struck by the nurse's sharp scalpel. The fleeing Udahai looked back, mocking the already dead man, and shouted words of thanks for getting caught and letting him escape. Fanshu saw that moment. The moment when humanity fell. What's the difference between Udahai and a monster now? He turned around and walked towards the nurse eating her victim. He turned and walked toward the nurse eating her victim. Zhao noticed that Fanshu had fallen behind the others and called out to him. While he was already next to the nurse and started touching her leg, touching her makes his heart flutter and not feel lonely. Zhao, who came over, asked Fanshu to call him the next time he groped her. Then he shared his impressions of her crystal white skin. Fanshu looked at the satisfied Zhao and thought that this guy was funny. It's not certain that he can become an esper too, but they will definitely escape from here together. After a little while, they continued to run. Fanshu asked if he was afraid, because then she could have him, to which Zhao replied that although the chances of dying were high, he would be friends with him. Reaching the end of the hallway, they found themselves in the dining room. Wanzi said that it was very good that they had found this place, because canteens always have an emergency exit. Looking back at the girl who had found the door, he yelled for her to stop. 
and he said he wanted to open that door that was their salvation, Fanchu got an unpleasant feeling. This oppressive atmosphere was starting to press down even more. This meant that they were approaching them. Looks like they're all going to be dead soon. Once inside the door, everyone realized there was no way out. It's just a closet. Wanzi shouted angrily that this was a dead end and there was no way out. Now they're trapped. Fanchu realized it was a mistake. He should have gone to the left passage. But now there was no time to go back. Although some people might be able to escape, but they don't know how far they have to go. How many lives will be lost? Maybe I should roll back to the nurse myself. As Fanshu turned around and started to walk away, Zhao called out to him, telling him that he shouldn't go back or he would fall into her clutches. The voices coming from the crowd blamed Fanshu. They said it was his fault. If he hadn't chosen to go to the right side of the aisle, it would have been fine. And he's the reason they're stuck here. If he didn't know which way to go, why'd he go there in the first place? Zhao stood up for Fangxu and said that how dare they say that? They didn't want to go, did they? First you asked him about the path, and now you blame him for all your troubles. Why didn't you choose the path yourself? Udahai replied that it was different. They could have chosen it themselves, of course, but they trusted his choice. But they didn't think it would turn out this way. Who knew he would do that? Not only did he undermine trust, but also led to certain death. Wanzi interrupted him and said that this was not the time for this, and now was the time to figure out how to escape from here. Since the monster only attacks one person at a time, they have two or three minutes between attacks. This means only one thing. They need to choose a victim and hand it over to the monster. This will give them a chance to save themselves. After that, he grabbed Fanshu's hand and said that no one wants to be in a desperate situation, so he should redeem himself. Zhao rushed to help and shouted why he was doing that, and to let him go. Then he grabbed Wanzi and started choking him. But Wudahai grabbed him next and threw him to the floor. Then they started fighting and yelling insults at each other. They were interrupted by the loud sound of a door slamming shut. Wondering who had done it, they saw Fang Xiu's face behind the bars of the door and locked them in the storeroom. Zhao questioningly shouted, Why did he do that? And Wanzi called him crazy. They already knew what was about to happen. I always thought I couldn't show feelings for people. But I didn't think these monsters would be very interesting. Ha ha ha. Thank you, you, for helping me take an interest in this world. Next time, I'll thank you for everything. Wait. Fanshu fell to the floor, and blood began to spread around him. Seeing this, Wanzi shouted that it was time to run away now. The group then opened the door and ran out of the storage room, running past Fangxu's body. Zhao couldn't believe his eyes. He started screaming his name and crying. Then he clutched his throat, trying to hold back the blood that was gushing out. The fleeing Wanzi laughingly turned back to look at the victim who had become his salvation, but fell into a stupor when he saw something that frightened him far more than the nurse. The bleeding Fan Shu, who had only seconds to live, was smiling. He looked straight into his eyes. It was a look that cut to the core of his being, waking up as he touched the nurse's thigh that was eating Leafy's body. Fan Shu called out to Zhao and said that they had to leave right now. And because they had Leafy implants, they had much less time left. Heading towards the stairwell, Fanshu only chuckled slyly, catching up with the group that was descending the stairs and not yet realizing they were trapped. Fanshu jumped over the stair railing again and was ahead of everyone. While everyone was talking about how many floors they had descended, Wanzi was telling his brother's stories about the supernatural forces in the walls. Fanshu had already found the door, impressing everyone else by finding a way out of this illusion so quickly. A very surprised Wanzi asked if he was an esper. Fanshu said that we should go faster because there was only one minute left before the nurse came. Coming to the fork, Fanshu immediately said to go to the left passageway. A very satisfied Wanzi said he was very surprised at how Fangxu could calculate her timings and how he was able to determine the correct path so quickly. And now he was sure that Fanshu was definitely an esper. And if he leads him out of here, he'll give him five million in gratitude. Turning around, Fanshu smirked and told the man to take his time as he still had things to do here. Wanzi was stunned by this answer, and perplexed asked what business he was talking about. Before he could finish speaking, Fanshu's foot gave him a very strong kick right between his legs. At this moment, Wanzi lost the most precious thing he had, and now he fell to the floor, writhing and screaming in unbelievable pain. Choke on your money! Spend that five million on new balls, asshole! said Fanshu, laughing at him. Wanzi, who was almost out of breath, 
mumbled that Feng Xu would be responsible for everything. Udahai yelled at him, not understanding why he did it. Why did he hit him, and on the tenderest part of his body? Feng Xu replied that that beast was so fast that it would take him less than a minute to kill them. And if Wanzi lost his strength, he would definitely become prey. So, it could be considered that he had helped them. Udahai said it's crazy, and that he's not mixed up, and that there would be big trouble for him for being... His indignation was interrupted by Fan Chu's foot rapidly approaching the target. After that, Wudahaya's large body slumped to the floor next to Wanzi. You must die, uttered Fan Chu with a haughty look. Wudahai grabbed his crotch and lay moaning and screaming in pain. Zhao looked at it and felt their pain and said that he thought it was too cruel. A man standing nearby shouted and asked, What did he want in the first place? Why had he knocked out those two men? It's one thing to beat up Wanzi to save them. But why did he hit Wudahai? Fan Chu grinned and replied that it was just in case. Zhao was very inspired by this, saying that Fan Chu is incredible. The crowd started talking about what they would do if he decided to do something like that again. And is he even normal? Fan Chu said if they go right, they'll die. And if they go left, they'll live. And time is very short. The man asked why he doesn't go left first if it's so safe there. Or does he also want to use them as bait? To which Fan Shu replied that they'd have 10 seconds to escape while he needed the nurse's thigh. This response shocked the office workers, who were left utterly bewildered. Zhao asked excitedly, Would it be another time? And could he stay with him to wrangle his thigh? At that moment, there was a noise from the corridor and a nurse appeared. The shouting crowd began to quickly run away from her into the left aisle. Hiding themselves, they began to watch what was happening. At this time, Fan Shu looked at the nurse who was already above the victims. Wanzi, who was lying on the floor, begged him to help him. Afterwards, he said he felt some moisture. When he ran his hand over her groin and looked at her, he noticed that her hand was covered in blood. He yelled insults and that he killed his children. Then he tried to grab the leg that did it. Avoiding this, Fan Chu stepped on his hand. Then sitting down next to him, told him not to worry because he would not leave. Instead, he'll stick around to watch him die. At this moment, the nurse had already grabbed the head of the screaming Wanzi, after which she unscrewed it, ripped it off, tossed it aside as if it were a champagne cork. Blood splatters scattered in a radius of several meters, also hitting Fan Chu's face. Licking his lips and tasting the blood, he was satisfied with the taste of revenge as he expected. Wiping his face with his hand, he smilingly said to Wanzi not to take offense at him. Suddenly, he was seized by a savage pain that made him scream. He took hold of his chest. His heart was just bursting with pain. He heard a very familiar, sweet voice in his head, and the image of his wife was in his mind's eye. He thought of the day when she would die in his arms, and now he was sitting next to the nurse who was eating Wanzi with a bloody face and touching her feet. The people who hid couldn't believe their eyes. Is he really groping the monster? Fan Chu noticed Zhao standing next to him. Remembering how much he enjoyed doing it, he stood up and beckoned him over to him, offering to do it together. But he looked very horrified, so Zhao looked terrified. And the office worker started running away screaming that he had become a monster. Fanchu was surprised to be called a monster. Fanchu was surprised that he was called a monster. He's already stopped showing any sympathy and can no longer regain his humanity. Looking at Zhao, he thought that unlike him, he didn't need to do that. And if he doesn't want to, he won't make him do it. Zhao suddenly said that he is an ordinary office loser from an ordinary family. Of all the others, only Fanchu let him go together, only he became a friend to him. That's why he trusts him. Then he asked how Fanchu was feeling. After all, he looked like he had become some kind of beast. When he accidentally tripped over his head, he said it was a horror and a nightmare. Did Wangzi become the first prey? Then crouched down and began to reach for the nurse's leg. And now that they were both touching the lunch monster's thighs, Zhao asked, Why did he attack those two specifically? Fan Chu replied that this thing runs much faster than them, so it was necessary to sacrifice someone's lives in exchange for time. And if he didn't choose them, then who would Wanzi and Wudahai use? Him, who is forever opposing them, or Zhao, who means nothing to them? Fan Chu interrupted him and asked if he felt that coldness pervading his entire body. Zhao replied that he didn't feel anything at all. Fan Chu's body then began to fill with energy. He thought that it was right and he hadn't imagined it. What does that mean? Did her power penetrate him? He didn't feel this energy at first, but only until they reached the tipping point. Is this an omen of the awakening of power? Zhao asked if it was time for them to leave. Fan Chu told him to take his time. 
Then he said he felt a point of energy concentration. Just like that jerk. He pointed to Udahai, who was lying almost unconscious and holding his groin. Zhao said that's great, but they have to run away and save themselves. Plus, he said he can sense it, but he can't materialize it. Why is this happening? Fanchu replied that Zhao didn't have a choice between life and death. So even with such close contact, Zhao couldn't feel what he felt. Zhao thought about the fact that, although he had known Feng Xiu for almost his entire life, he didn't remember him standing on the brink of life and death. At this moment, the nurse who had already finished Wanzi's body moved on to her second victim and began to cut up the body with a scalpel. Udahai is very massive, so it takes her five minutes to deal with him. They have been near her for two minutes, and in three minutes they already have to run away urgently. Fanshu extended his hand towards the nurse trying to absorb more energy. He felt the cold energy all over his body again. He could feel it entering his body. But what exactly was it going through? Could it be through his soul? But the soul is amorphous, and only he can give it form. The longer he ingested the energy, the more power he felt in his body. It penetrated every cell of his skin, filling him with something new, something supernatural. All his senses were sharpening. His mind was expanding. His sense of smell and hearing were also heightened. His gustatory senses had also sharpened. And now he tasted the whole palette of flavors. It was beyond all his expectations. He had become stronger and smarter in such a short time. The sensation of energy through his body overwhelmed him. Now the true essence of this world appeared before him. That's the power? He can use it now. But he thinks his powers are only 1% awakened. So he decides that he needs to merge with these monsters many more times to gain their full power. And Esper's abilities are the power of the motivated soul. What he wants, what he needs, that is its manifestation. But then what does he want? Or what does his soul crave? These thoughts caused him a wild pain that made his body clench. And then he thought that perhaps his ability was this, pain? When he strikes, he feels intense pain. Is it really inside that he consists only of suffering? However, when he was dying, he felt no physical pain, only mental anguish. So he can make people feel the same way. Realizing this, Fan Chu laughed at the top of his voice. He was even more satisfied with his strength now. Zhao was very excited looking at him and seeing some very strange things happening to him. He asked if he was all right, but Fan Chu didn't hear him then. He was happy that he had succeeded. He thought about how wonderful it would be to make these monsters feel the same way. He craved it incredibly, remembering his beloved wife who had made him suffer again and again. He craved revenge. A voice broke through his thoughts and shouted his name. It was Zhao who said that two minutes had passed and it was time to leave. Fanchu replied that he wanted to stay and try out his new skills. Zhao said he would stay with him, and also congratulated him on becoming an esper, as Wanzi had said. Turning around, Fanchu approached the nurse who was still greedily eating Udahaya. He clenched his fist in which was concentrated all the pain after 21 deaths, and if there are more deaths, he'll only get stronger. Which means his abilities could be limitless. You'll be the first to experience it! With that shout, Fanchu punched the monster right on its ugly face. His fist bounced off her like a bullet bouncing off metal. He was very interested to see what the effect would be after one hit, considering it was only 1% of his power. When he looked at her, he found that she was still eating. She wasn't paying any attention to him. It seems to have zero effect. She doesn't even have an abrasion on her. Maybe she put all her energy into defense. Then he won't be able to hurt her at all. Next time, you should not strike with your fist, but use something else, some kind of weapon. But will it be able to absorb all its power? Zhao asked again, wondering if it was time for them to run away from here. Otherwise, he's going to grope her again. Fan Xu saw what he needed now. A weapon. It was a nurse's scalpel lying on the floor not far from her, with the thought that it would probably work. He bent down to pick it up. As soon as he Fan Xu took the sharp scalpel in his hands, he felt the power of this item pass into him. In place with the power, he could also feel the entire history of this blade all the pain and suffering that was caused by that object, experienced all the experiments the nurse did on people, felt the bitterness of it all. She couldn't handle the horror of it all and turned into a monster. However, it turns out that the true form is contained in the subject. I wonder if we can take her down with her scalpel. Walking over to Zhao, who was touching his leg at the time, told him to step back. Zhao asked for a little more time to do so, but seeing the scalpel in Fan Xu's hands and realizing his intentions, agreed and quickly withdrew. Swinging as hard as you can and concentrating your power into the scalpel, 
He delivered a very hard blow to the back of the nurse's head, but that didn't seem to work either. Zhao noticed that the point was cutting people with ease, but she wasn't even scratched. Her skin was still as smooth as ever, and very soft. That's why this skin is so pleasant to touch. Fan Chu wondered why this was happening. After all, this scalpel could cut through anything and anyone. Then he realized it was about the soul. A scalpel must be energized by the soul of the wielder. But now his strength has been depleted. So this scalpel isn't as strong as it could be. Realizing that there seems to be no revenge now, and the monster was about to finish his prey, Fan Chu grabbed Zhao by the scruff of the neck and dragged him behind him, saying that there was no time to run away. Standing up and looking around, the nurse was very confused not to find her little scalpel. After running far enough away, they began to survey their surroundings. After what happened, Fan Chu's senses were heightened. So he realized that there was someone not far away from them. Then he realized it was two office workers, and he thought they had a good hiding place. Zhao said there are four doors here, and asked which one they wanted. The survivors who came out of hiding made him jump with fright. They said they were very glad that everything was all right, and that they had been waiting for them. Then they asked Fan Chu to lead them out. Zhao accusingly said that all they can do is run, only somehow the path always needs to be pointed out to them. Fan Chu said it was very simple. And pointing to the four doors, he said everyone would go through their own. This statement shocked people. The man said they already didn't have time to run around and he was going to spend time checking every door. Fan Chu turned around and started to walk away. He told them to get away from him and do what they wanted, thereby frightening them and making them feel hopeless. Then they heard someone crawling very fast on the ceiling. They realized that the nurse was already here. They were surprised that she had eaten Wanzi and Wudahai so quickly. Fan Shu, noticing that the nurse still hadn't attacked, realized, Looks like he broke her murder scheme by taking that scalpel he had in his hand. Fang Shu opened one of the four doors. Then he stepped into the doorway in anticipation of what awaited him there waiting for him. There was a landing in front of him, realizing they were about to be overtaken. They slammed the door shut and started running up the stairs. No sooner had they moved five meters away than the door was kicked in as if it had been shot out of a cannon. Looking back, they saw the angry face of the nurse. Give it back! In an eerie, non-human voice, she said. Then she started darting from wall to wall so that it was almost impossible to see her. They felt completely hopeless and didn't know what to expect. Zhao shouted to Fan Shu to look back, for she was already near him. Turning around, Fan Shu saw a nurse dangling from the ceiling who was shouting orders for him to return her scalpel. Abruptly pushing off jumping and grabbing Fan Shu, she plowed him to the floor. The last thing Fan Shu saw was its huge mouth and blade-sharp teeth. She bit into his throat, exsanguinating him. So he was killed almost immediately. Oh shit, death again. Looks like we're going to have to go through this again. And it looks like more than once, hurting these guys again. Shattering their most precious possession. Well, at least it's fun to look at their faces at that moment. Taking her scalpel again while she eats someone, then seeing her ugly face and hearing her creepy orders to give it back to her. And running, of course. Again and again. As long as it takes. Fanchu wasn't going to give up. Fanchu tried the north doors this time. Running into the elevator, he quickly pressed the button hoping to leave. But the elevator doors didn't have time to close because they were already being held by a nurse. Reaching out her fearsome clawed paw, she grabbed his head. Oh, crap. This path doesn't seem to be the way to go. The next time, Fanchu tried entering the southern doors, but he didn't manage to pass through very far this time. He was jumped on by a nurse who was already waiting for him. It was another death and another inappropriate passage. Looks like the only road left is the east doors. If this door is still a dead end, I'll probably have to give up on taking the scalpel. But I hate to do that. Fanchu still had hope. Even though her speed was much faster than his speed, but he could use a few death rolls to predict the trajectory of her attack. To a certain extent, reverting to death is equivalent to predicting the future. And he remembers this place. There's a safe passageway to the left here that he headed for. As Fan Chu approached the door and tried to open it, he felt the familiar sensation of a scalpel going through his neck. Well, this is the ninth time this has happened. Fan Chu knew that he was close to the right passage. Next time it would definitely work out. This time, Fan Chu decided to try a new strategy. Now standing with Wudahai and Wanzi, he directed them to go east. Realizing that the nurse was close, they started to run away screaming. And when it looked like she was about to get the last of the fugitives, the nurse just outruns them and doesn't attack. There was only one person she was interested in at the moment. Whoever stole her knife. When she caught up to him, she leapt towards him to grab him with her claws. And now it looked like it would be the next death. 
but Fan Shu dodged her hand by slightly tilting his head sideways. The nurse was very surprised by this because she attacked at a very high speed. Turning around and looking into her eyes, Fan Shu smiled and chuckled. Then he started running further away. This confused the nurse. Then incredibly pissed off, she chased after him. Coming to an unbelievable rage, she screamed with the voice of a monster and started waving her arms trying to strike. But Fan Chu managed to deftly dodge dozens of very fast lethal attacks. During this period, there were several death rollbacks. In addition, after he had gained soul powers, his physical and mental attributes were greatly enhanced. Oh my god, Fan Chu is unbelievable. He's so cool, Zhao shouted happily as he looked at the scene. The nurse's rage was at an all-time high. It really pissed her off that she couldn't catch him. This time, Fan Chu successfully predicted her movements and dodged her attacks perfectly. Scalpel! My scalpel! Give it back! Shouted the nurse, trying to chase and grab him. Everyone was shocked at how he managed to survive while dodging her ferocious attacks. Zhao was incredibly enthusiastic looking at this. He wanted Fang Xiu to become his spiritual mentor. Finally saw that door with the exit sign again. This looks like a way out. This could be salvation. Suddenly, Fan Xu stopped, realizing that he could no longer hear the monster's claws scraping against the walls. No one was chasing him anymore. Turning around, he realized that the nurse had stopped chasing him and froze in place as he approached the exit. Don't go, she said in a non-human voice. Looking into her eyes, Fan Xu saw intense fear. He couldn't understand why she had stopped attacking and trying to kill him. What was she afraid of? Suddenly, the nurse turned around and jumped towards where Zhao was standing. She hit him in the face with her breasts, knocking him down. After that, I ran out of here very quickly past the frightened people. Zhao noticed that it was cold but gentle enough, and it hurt more when he fell to the floor than when he received the blow. The office workers wondered why she ran away. Why didn't she attack and kill them? Zhao ran up to Fan Xu and started asking questions. Was he all right? What did the nurse say? And why did she run away? He said he was fine. According to conventional logic, it's a way to leave the hospital. But when the nurse saw the sign above the door, she got scared and ran away. But monsters can live outside the hospital. That means there's a good chance it's not an option. And there's something in there that really scared her. Fan Xu could feel the darkness behind that door. There was something eerie behind it. Something like the mouth of a huge monster or a very deep abyss. The people behind him were asking why they were still standing. This is the exit. Why don't they just come out right now? What's the problem? Turning around, he said he needed to take a break before going out, then sat down on the floor. Zhao said that he was very happy to take a break after running away from the monster for tens of minutes already. He and the others could definitely use a rest. Everyone else sat down too. Fan Xu sat for a while, closing his eyes and concentrating, then stood up abruptly and started walking towards the door, saying that it was time for them to leave this place. They went through the door and into a corridor which they followed for a while. The whole way went smoothly and without any problems. But at some point they felt something, like some kind of tangible aura. This aura was emitted by the thick iron door at the end of the hallway. As he approached this door, Fan Xu had a strong feeling. He felt a strong sense of danger from what was hiding behind this door. Zhao asked, Is this the road that will lead them out of here? Is it safe? Fan Xu replied that if they saw danger, they would have to run away. Then, with a bit of effort, he opened this mysterious energy-filled door. When he stepped inside, everything changed dramatically. He felt as if he had crossed the edge of reality. It was pitch black, and Fan Xu could see nothing at all. When he tried to scream, he realized he couldn't hear anything. There was absolute silence. Even though darkness engulfed the path, Fan Xu decided to move forward. It seemed to him he was moving endlessly and this road would never end. His sense of time and space was also consumed by darkness. But he kept walking, further and further away. At some point, everything began to change. The darkness in front of his eyes began to dissipate. He saw that he was now standing in front of the gate of White Willow Academy. Fan Chu couldn't realize what had just happened. It was just like when he first arrived here. All around him he saw perfectly normal surroundings. It was as if nothing was happening. So that's it. That's the end of it? Is he really out of the game? No, stop! There's a strong feeling that something is definitely wrong here. But what is it? That remains to be seen. Pet the cat! <coughs>